Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Florida. Just 10 days ago, the Marlins were in the process of riding the ship and sweeping the Nationals. Now a scene ship to D.C., Nationals Park, home of the National League East champs. Deep rotation and a powerful lineup. It's a three-gamer, and it starts tonight. And you've got a better seat than this guy. That's right, don't be that guy. We'll give you a ringside seat, so to speak, Marlins and Nationals. Teddy Roosevelt welcoming national fans. Big crowd expected. Marlins and Nats first meeting here in D.C. The Marlins sweeping the Nats down in South Florida. And David Phelps gets his first look at Washington. Jordan Zimmerman. As the Marlins return to the scene of the crime or the no-hitter, so to speak. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Really an ambitious road trip for the Marlins, who certainly are playing well. Nine of the last 11. Washington, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Great rotations in all three cities. Yeah, it starts right here. So this is going to be a good road trip. And uh, think about it, too. The Nationals playing a lot better baseball than they were when they were in Miami. Back to work for D. Gordon. Day off yesterday arrives here with his ball club to face the Nationals. He's our T-Mobile game changer. You know what D. Gordon has done lately, I, I think it's amazing if you look at his last few games, the average, even his first few games he was hitting 360. But D. Gordon right now has hit in eight consecutive games. But how about this? Eight straight games he's hit 645. He's been on base nine times in a row. He's got six base hits, three walks, He's doing a little bit of everything, though D. Gordon has been the light at the top that really has gotten things going for the Marlins. And he had a great three-game series against the Nationals as he chats it out in the outfield. The Marlins getting ready to take on Jordan Zimmerman. David Phelps goes for the fish. This should be fun, folks. First of a three-gamer in D.C.
Miami Marlins baseball on Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places by Auto Nation. Save on over 70,000 vehicles now. Visit AutoNation.com. Nationals Park. Crowds arriving. Presidents in their receiving line. And Jordan Zimmerman getting ready to throw the first pitch. Start number six for Zimmerman. The Marlins faced him back on April 24th. He went six innings, six hits, two runs. Fish won that ball game, and D. Gordon takes outside. Pinch of Penny brings you the first pitch. The red hot D. Gordon, an eight game hitting streak, 20 for 31 in those ball games. He swings and misses, it's one and one. Marlins have won nine of their last 11. Nationals five of their last six. Zimmerman works quickly. A ball and a strike. Gordon also streaking. Nine straight plate appearances. He's reached base and he's six for six. In those nine plate appearances with three walks. And he smacks it to center field, but it's caught there by Denard Span. Boy, he hit it right on the nose, too. Guess if you're going to lose a streak, you're going to lose it with a line drive. That's Jam. the way to do it. <laughs> Jam Lexus brings you the lineup. D. Gordon in the leadoff spot. Martin Prado is at third base. Giancarlo Stanton in right. Marcelo Zuna in center. Justin Bohr getting a start and a local kid, too. He's at first. JT Real Muto is the catcher. Ichiro had left. A Danny Echeverria, the most productive number eight hitter in the National League. And David Phelps hits ninth. Martin Prado takes a letter high strike. Prado had a really nice series against the Nationals in that sweep, which opened Miami's last homestand and opens this road trip. And Prado dumps it into right center field. A base hit. Span cuts it off. And Prado was now 9 for 21 in his career against a really good pitcher in Jordan Zimmerman. Well, let's take a look at that defense for the Nationals. There's Jason Worth and Art Spann and Bryce Harper in the outfield. Escobar and Desmond. Left side, Desmond's made nine errors already this year. Espinosa at second. Ryan Zimmerman at first. And Wilson Ramos behind the plate. And you better be ready because the M.O. of Jordan Zimmerman attack, attack the striking zone, strike zone, and he works quickly. Stan takes a fastball under the hands, and it is 1 0. Giancarlo comes in leading the National League in RBIs at 24, six home runs. And he smokes it into left field. Worth is there, drops it right out of his glove. Well, the Marlins have hit two balls very hard at outfielders. That's going to be an error on Worth. And here's a look. Well, it was a ball that Jason Worth misplayed the other night at City Field in New York that cost a couple of runs. This one, he gets leather on, just doesn't uh, make the catch. But you're right, every ball has been hit on the nose. Matt Williams, skipper of the Nationals. And here's Marcelo Zuna, his bat very productive during a 7 and 2 homestand. Ozuna, five game streak, nine for 19 in those five games with four doubles. Yeah, Marcelo Zuna with a 344 average on that homestand. The one thing, Rich, about Zimmerman. Early on his first few starts he didn't have the command that he usually does but over his last two starts he's walked just one batter. Ozuna lines it into the seats. One and two to Marcel Ozuna. Last three outings. That Marlin start right in the middle. His Atlanta start, he was very good. He was very good against the Marlins. Though the Marlins got to the Nationals bullpen and won that ball game late. And by the way, Martin Prado took care of the no hitter. 
That's, you're still scoring from uh, last year in this ballpark. Ozuna up the middle into center field. It's a base hit. Prado around third, and he will score. And the softest ball hit of the four hitters produces a run. Ozuna just out in front, guided it up the middle. And certainly worth his stewing over that error right now. Boy, this is such a good way to start. That's a good pitch, too. A good slider down and away. And Ozuna stays back, just stays on it, gets it up the middle past Desmond, and good way to start the game with some base hits and some good ABs. And now Justin Bohr, the pride of Centerville, Virginia, which is about 16 miles from here, played his college ball in Fairfax, Virginia, at George Mason. And that's close by as well. Lots of friends and family. And Bohr getting a start against the right hander Jordan Zimmerman. Look at the start he's had six for nine. And a good series against the Nationals. And Bohr pops it into shallow center. Desmond's out. Span is in. And Span makes the catch. Yeah, we've told you a little bit about the MO of. Jordan Zimmerman. Let's give you more on the scouting report. This 28 uh, year old right hander who is a free agent after this year. We know he has no hit stuff. He's another ace. They have many. And he has three plus pitches. Now JT Real Muto. And he takes a strike. Real Muto had a day off finally yesterday. He'd been in there for a good stretch. His last game on Saturday, a couple of hits. RBI double and an RBI single. That was in Miami's 7 0 win over the Phillies. Stand at second, Ozuna at first, Miami on the board here in D.C. Real Muto, line drive right field. Harper dives and wow. he has it. Every ball in that inning was hit hard. The Marlins hit a line drive to every outfielder the Nationals have. And David Phelps will take the mound. Nice play by Harper, keeps it at 1 0. Evening is just about to arrive here in Washington, D.C., and it is absolutely a gorgeous night. It feels like late June, early July, cherry blossoms and all of that. J.M. Lexus brings you the Nationals lineup. Denard Spann in center, you know Escobar at third, Jason Wirtz in left, Bryce Harper in right, Ryan Zimmerman has always hit the Marlins well, Wilson Ramos the catcher, Ian Desmond at short, Danny Espinosa is in the eighth spot, and Jordan Zimmerman. A very athletic pitcher hits ninth 
Here is David Phelps making start number four. Denard Spann lines one down the left field line. And that one's foul and it's going to end up in the corner. Phelps really a swing guy when the season started but in the absence of Henderson Alvarez who has been in that rotation and has pitched well. He has been outstanding in his three starts an ERA of one point five three and a one and oh record first time he's ever faced the Nationals. It's an interesting offensive ball club the Nationals remember about a week ago got on fire and scored a ton of runs against the Atlanta Braves. They went into New York. They scored two runs in three games but won two of those games. You're winning the last two one nothing. And doing it obviously on the heels of great starting pitching and all of a sudden that rotation. Seems to be kicking into gear in their last five games their ERA is one six nine. But that pitch almost came back and caught the corner and some. Nice. Movement to it that counts one and two. That yeah, was amazed to read is the first time in franchise history that almost came back. And that's including the Expos franchise. First time in franchise history. That they had had back to back one nothing wins. But you're right it is an interesting. Lineup. There's the. Uh, gathering of the starters. Strasburg Scherzer Geo's in the middle. Hit hard off oh, Prado got there across the diamond scooped there by Bohr. nicely done on both corners. For out number one the bottom of the first. Well if you remember Martin Prado had a nice series against the Nationals in Miami offensively and defensively and he starts it right there with a terrific play and gets nice help in the other end from Justin Bohr. Now you know Escobar. Escobar the excitable infielder. Who's played. A little bit of everywhere and. Right now is at third base it was thought. When Anthony Rendon went down and Escobar moved to third that Escobar would move back to second. When Rendon got back up the middle Escobar's got a hit. But there's some talk of leaving Escobar at third and when Rendon gets back putting him at second. Yeah he's done a nice job at third defensively and he also feels comfortable there. Let's see the defense for the Marlins in this one still terrific defense just eight errors on the season. Ichiro Ozuna and stand in the outfield Prado and Etch. Etch and Maria with just one error. D. Gordon has committed just one. Justin Bohr you saw pick one from Prado. He's at first base and JT Real Muto behind the plate. Now worth. And as you noted the offense of the Nationals is. An interesting one there. Not scoring a ton of runs. And worth one guy that is yet to get going a 159 average. Rio Muto making a nice pick. You have to think the missed time in spring training the uh, surgery on the right shoulder you have to think that has affected the start of Jason Worth. Phelps goes 2 and 0 oh. Phelps has given up just three runs as a starter. A 1 5 3 ERA in those three starts. One of the things that Chuck Hernandez talked about David Phelps Marlins pitching coach talked about his fastball command that he's really had that and that has set up everything else. Count sits at three and one you know Escobar is at first Miami has a run. Marcelo Zuna knocking home a run with an RBI single. There's Chuck. And the Marlins starters in their nice run. 
Miami's won 9 of 11. The Marlins starting pitching has been outstanding. Yeah, the starters during that 9 and 2 run with a 2.16 ERA. So basically, you have two starting staffs that are both throwing the ball well. And the amazing thing about Miami's staff is they are without Jose Fernandez. They are without Henderson Alvarez. And of course, the Nationals have all hands on deck. See if Escobar's on the move. Not running. Worth clobbers it to left. Ichiro on a hop. And the Nationals have runners first and second. One out. And here comes Bryce Harper. One thing's for certain. We've seen both sides swing the bats pretty well. And talking to guys around the batting cage with the I don't I don't know if I want to say unusually warm weather here at this time of year. But with the weather as it is they always say the ball travels and carries much better. Would you settle for unseasonable. I'll go for that. OK. Here now is Bryce Harper. Harper this year really has started to walk a lot more chase a lot less and that makes him a really dangerous hitter. Not that he wasn't before but even more so. He's gone 19 games straight. With getting on base. And he leads Major League Baseball with 24 walks. And he was always a guy Tommy in his first few years in the big leagues. If you were a pitcher and you could get him to chase he would chase. And that's how many pitchers got him out. Yeah he would be an answer that a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't get. Who leads the major leagues in walks. And a strike. Two and one of course the Nationals. Defending champions of the East. There's the walk and strikeout ratio. You see the major league average. So Harper ahead of the class at just 22. And he takes in from Phelps and it's three and one. But David Phelps, the last couple of hitters now, has fallen behind. Worth came back, bit him with a base hit. Escobar had a base hit. And now three and one to a tough out in Bryce Harper. And he lost him. So the bags are loaded. Remember the inning started with the great play by Prado to rob a hit of Span. Escobar and Worth have singles. The walk to Harper is 25th already. And here is Ryan Zimmerman. Yeah now Phelps has to deal with a guy who's over his career. Look at that four grand slams. He set 23 career home runs against the Marlins. Infield looks for a ground ball with one down. Zimmerman to right and deep enough to produce a run. Escobar and Worth tag. And it's Escobar who scores. Worth holds second. That's a 1 1 game. I don't want to say this is like a Mayweather Pacquiao fight because that didn't have a whole lot of action. <laughs> but you, you get the feeling that the way the Marlins swung the bat in the top half, the way the Nationals have swung the bat here, it's going to be that kind of game. Go Hagler Hearns then. I like that one better. <laughs> More. More big blows land. I was there. trying to be top. <laughs> I know. Wilson Ramos now for Washington. The Marlins check into this ball game just a game under 500 amazing. After a three and 11 start to be 12 and 13 right now. And the Nationals 12 and 14. Ramos pulls one at Chavaria in the hole. Flip Prado. Was he there? No, he wasn't. Safe at third. Prado had to do two things at once. One was trying to get to the bag, the other was trying to find it. 
I guess three things. Then he had to catch the ball. And I'm not sure you don't see Martin Prado make too many mental mistakes. I'm not so sure if he was anticipating Echeverria coming to him for the out. He may have thought Etch was going to go to second to get the force. But he went to third. A little tough for Prado to get there. And the inning stays alive. We're calling that a single. I would, I would go with Fielder's choice, but Desmond goes after the first pitch and fouls it back into the seats. Well, Ian Desmond, his national shortstop, in his sixth full year. Takes a fastball up and in, and for Desmond, a slow start in the field and somewhat at the plate. He's cooled off over the last week. 24 strikeouts. He's walked eight times. He does have nine doubles and a home run. Here's that play again. If you can see Martin Prado. He breaks to his left and then goes easy to third. I, I really think he thought that Echevarria was going to go somewhere else for the out. They'll talk about it. That's got to be a, a disconcerting feeling though. You know the ball's coming to you and you can't find the base with your foot. Phelps outside corner strikes out Desmond. So a nice escape for David Phelps a long inning for the Nationals but they get just the one run and leave them loaded and after one one one. Tied ball game. The Marlins have played 25 games this season, 22 of which have been against National League East competition. And while it may help to see the same teams over and over, Mike Redmond says it actually really hasn't made a difference because the way the schedule has been set up, the fact that they see teams like the Nationals and Mets so often during spring training, it hasn't really mattered. He says the one thing that has made a huge difference, though, is the fact that his team is having fun. They're playing loose, they're playing with confidence, and that is is what they're going to focus on as this season progresses. Rich, Tommy. And Jessica, I think one of the guys that has helped that just had a base hit to right field, and that is Ichiro. The 41-year-old has been the life of the clubhouse. His teammates love him. He gets along with everybody, is engaged, and uh, strokes a single to right. Yeah, he's just amazing to watch. He, he in his career, has had 76 ABs now against the Nationals. And it's hit around 350. 
A Danny Echeverria now. And Etch pulls one wide of third. Echeverria had to send back his player of the week title belt after wearing it around for a week because Paul Goldschmidt is the National League player of the week. Though many Marlin fans had hoped D. Gordon would uh, win that as uh, Ichiro is just back in Zimmerman to Zimmerman and Ichiro under the tag. I was a little surprised uh, when I heard that I, I assumed well Goldschmidt probably hit four or five home runs for the week and he, and he didn't he hit one. So and did each so well, each of went but Gordon had the, the great hit. I mean when you hit 645 it, it's really tough not to win it but uh, congrats to Goldschmidt but boy D Gordon could have won it. His last 10 games. Yeah over 600 for the week each are away from first. And Echeverria takes away it's two and one you know, over 600 some stolen bases some some terrific defensive plays. Uh, when you're facing Jordan Zimmerman. There are two things you know you're going to get one is strike zone efficiency. And the other is a lot of fastballs. He's one of those guys. Yeah he can throw the off speed stuff but a lot of times he'll just. Command the fastball so well that he doesn't need the secondary stuff. Each row's picked off. In a rundown. And each row is tagged out. So Echeverria left at the plate with a 2 1 count, and each row picked off. So just like that there's an out. And here's the pitch to Echeverria. Not sure if there was a play on. If Ichiro was moving. He obviously was moving. But if a hit run is on, Ichiro knows as well as anybody, that's not a play you get picked off on. And yeah, Trevoria goes down. So just like that, there are two outs. For the best seats at Marlins Park in 2015, you got a variety of new season ticket packages, including prorated full season, half season, 20 game mini plans, and the new 10 game pack. Plans start at just $240. You can secure your seats by calling 1 877 Marlins or go to Marlins.com slash 2015 tickets. Here is David Phelps. And remember, if you're a season ticket holder this year, you can get in to watch Marlins batting practice. Special entrance third base side 430. You can get in and see the Marlins take BP. A little happy hour at the Budweiser bar and balcony. You know you can get in and it's quiet at that time. You can hear what it sounds like when Giancarlo smacks a ball. If you've never been able to get a ball whether in game or batting practice that's a great time to do it. Phelps is rung up. Jordan Zimmerman gets through the second in a 1 1 game.
Ico Marlins moment. Go back to this date in 2013. A one hitter combined with Mike Dunn and Steve Ciszek at Citizens Bank Park. Jose struck out nine in seven innings. It was his first major league win. And an adult beverage on his head. He was unable to actually drink any of that because he wasn't old enough at the time. Boy, it was fun. Wasn't that fun watching uh, Jose throw pitches like that? Well, with uh, if everything stays the way it's uh, going right now, we'll be able to see that and say that in maybe a little over a month and a half. Danny Espinosa, Jordan Zimmerman, Denard Spann for the Nationals. If you just happened by, Miami opening a three gamer. In D.C., then it's on to San Francisco for four and Los Angeles for three. David Phelps misses away to Espinosa. Long first inning. The Nationals sent eight to the plate, but only one scored. Ryan Zimmerman sacrifice fly scored Yunel Escobar. A little part of his game that normally he has success. Is getting ahead, and so far early, David Phelps has fallen behind a number of hitters. And another three ball count. Phelps trying to collect himself at the back of the mound. He gave up three hits in that first inning and walked Bryce Harper to load the bases. Three and one. Not a full schedule in baseball tonight. Towards the line, Ichiro gives it a run. And it's in the seats. Ichiro getting accustomed not only to left field in general, where he hasn't played a whole lot in his brilliant career, but also new ballparks. He did. Up here, here, I want to say in an exhibition game. Yes, he did. He also played a game at uh, old RFK. Ichiro at the track makes the catch. Marlins Fan Express is back and it'll bring you right to the ballpark. To see the Marlins at Marlins Park, you can book this luxury motor coach for your group. 305 480 2523. 305 480 2523. Or email groups at marlins.com. And if you book it, how impressive is it to the neighbors when a bus with Jose Fernandez on the side or Giancarlo Stanton on the side pulls up? Right in front of your house. Rich, and let me just say this. Uh, you you know you're insured of a nice safe drive because uh, often on my drive home to uh, Palm Beach County up the turnpike I pass the uh, fan express bus and the bus is within the speed limits and doing just fine. And you're insured as well. <laughs> <laughs> You've got that going for you. Here's Jordan Zimmerman and he misses away. It is. I mean, there have been many nights where you are and I, after a long game, if we had the choice, we would ride the Fan Express home. Oh, would love to. Maybe we could do that. Special appearance on the uh, Fan Express bus. Good comeback. Good pitches to his uh, mound opponent. So sometimes that can get a pitcher back on track. Denard Span now, leadoff man. Still healing up from all of the things he had go wrong. Sports hernia in the offseason. And then a core injury. Here's a guy, Rich, who had 31 stolen bases last year. Now, because of that injury, he missed the first 12 games this year. Denard Span has just one steal. The Nationals as a team have three. And I, I think that injury in the surgery he had to his core 
has limited his running game a little bit. I have to be honest with you. That's the first time I've ever heard that description of an injury, a core injury. And you wonder if that's going to be a, a new word going forward. It seems like in sports, every every 10 years or so, there's a new term like intercostal strain. When, when did that become popular? Probably about seven or eight years ago. Prado another pick. Prado another play. Bohr got another one at first. Wow, those two. And watch Prado. Prado. Prado wants to make sure that he gives Bohr a little love. Our team Prado, outstanding play. It's still 1-1. Night settling in in D.C. and a nice crowd at Nationals Park. D. Gordon in the box. Jordan Zimmerman misses. D. Gordon smacked one to center, which was caught. A line drive to Denard Span, and that ended his run of a nine consecutive at bats with getting on base. He was six for six over that span. No pun intended. Here's the 1 1 jam shot popped him up. And the shortstop Ian Desmond has it. So an out here in the third. This copyright telecast presented by the authority of the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted. In any form, in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Marlins. First trip in for the Marlins this year, the eighth year of Nationals Park. Ballpark that holds a little over 41,000. Here's Prado. A base hit in the first. Prado's had very good success against Jordan Zimmerman, whether a Brave or a Diamondback or a Marlin. He's 9 for 21. This one ends up in Espinosa's glove. We have breaking news. Well, sort of. Here it is. Christian Yelich rehab update. Good news. I like the fact that he's got a stolen base. Yeah, I, I like that he singled his first time up, walked his second time, stole, scored a run. The plan for Christian Yelich, he played five innings uh, yesterday to play seven innings tonight, have a day off tomorrow, play nine innings. Once or twice, and then hopefully, if all goes well, we'll see him in San Francisco. One, two, three inning for Miami. Bottom of the third coming up in DC, 1 1.
bottom of the third. They finally stopped work, or at least finished work, I guess I should say, on the monument, the Jefferson Memorial. Now they've all the they workers. They moved all the scaffolding over to the, the Capitol. Uh, Capitol building. <laughs> yes, they did. Marlin Park offers a variety of suites, and there's no renovation needed there. All behind home plate along the first baseline. Can be rented for just one game at a time. Suites accommodate groups from 16 to 70. Upscale contemporary furnishings. Great food and beverage options. 1877 Marlins. Or go to Marlins.com slash groups. This one Prado can't get. And you know Escobar around first with a big turn. And a throw back to first. He is safe. Justin Bohr with a tag. Escobar just narrowly avoided the out. A strong throw by Ichiro and a quick throw from D. Gordon at second. Boy, that was close. Well, what a nice heads up play. This ball, one of the few that's gotten by Martin Prado. But charged by Ichiro perfectly. Strong throw. That sets it up. D. Gordon almost like he's turning a double play. Gets the throw. Somehow, Escobar gets back on the bag just before the tag. That was close and a heads up play. So Escobar is two for two. Here's Worth. Here's another look at the play at first. Let's see if he got the hand back in. He did. He got the hand in, the tag right there on the wrist. Yep, and that's the telling angle. That first angle, it looked like glove beat hand to bag, but you could see there the glove never made contact. So nicely done by Dan Ayasonia, first base umpire. David Phelps. Saw eight men come to the plate in the first. The Nationals got just the one run. He had a one, two, three second. But facing the teeth of the Nats order. With Worth, Harper, and Zimmerman all lined up after the Escobar single. We've talked rich about the uh, versatility of David Phelps in his career both as a starter and a reliever. Just to give you an idea he's he's appeared as a relief pitcher 49 times. And he started. This is 44th start in the big leagues and his ERA is about the same as a reliever and a starter. Sometimes you'll see a bigger differential in guys who do that. It had to feel good for the Marlins that were on last year's team to sweep the Nationals back in Miami because the Nationals dominated the Marlins last year. Breaking ball, ground ball. Echeverria on his back, got the out. Terrific play. A dainty Echeverria. Gordon took the throw worth runs well enough that you're never going to get him on that. But the Marlins just happy to get one out. Just keep writing them down. Just keep writing down those plays that Echeverria makes that the middle infield makes. He's shaded over for a double play so he has to go a little further to his right. Not only does he pick it he makes a really good feed to D Gordon from his backside. Because he starts the roll which is like a reverse roll as he's coming to the ground. He actually falls and turns the opposite direction too. Yeah. Now Bryce Harper with a mean rip. 
And it's 0 and 1. I tell you what, if you're a, a pitcher, if you're a Marlins pitcher, you certainly have to appreciate the defense that's behind you. One of our go to guys for defensive numbers is Mark Simon. And today he had this ground ball efficiency, turning ground balls into outs. And Miami is third behind Kansas City and that surprising Houston Astro team. We'll put that up again. That means the number of ground balls that are turned into outs. How efficient is your infield? Well, and to give you an idea, the Astros lead the AL West by seven games. Kansas City just a half game behind the Tigers in the Central. So defense does help you win games. So of all the ground balls that are hit, how good are you at turning them into outs? Worth diving back in two and two. Perry Hill certainly proud of those numbers. As Harper knocks it opposite way and out of play. I think in that chart as well what's impressive about Houston and even Miami is those are two fast infields. And if you've got a, a fast infield Texas Arizona Houston and Miami Kansas City is not. No most most central division infields have got uh, pretty thick grass that Velcro cut. That's a good example of what we were talking about earlier with Bryce Harper. A year or two ago, he may chase that pitch, go after it. There's a look at the cut here in D.C. This is a, certainly not as fast as Miami, but not central cut. With Worth up in the first inning, Escobar did not go on a 3 2 pitch. Let's see if he does with Harper, the hitter. I would think yes. It's in and Harper has walked for the second time. You know and it's amazing he was not going. It's just a part of the game that the Nationals don't do a lot of. We talked about it before just three stolen bases this year. So Matt Williams has uh, other areas that Offensively, he goes after. It's just not the stolen base. Now, Ryan Zimmerman, in the history of Washington baseball, Zimmerman has hit more home runs than all but one player. And that's a guy that I know you used to marvel at, Frank Howard. Oh, yeah. Frank Howard. Big Hondo. As a uh, member of a Washington, D.C. team. Hit 237 homers. They used to have at RFK some of those seats in the upper deck dotted and marked where Frank Howard hit them. And Howard did it in a fewer seasons than Zimmerman. Zimmerman at 186, Howard at 237. Ball on a strike. I like one of the names that he just passed because as a fan growing up baseball fan as a kid I think I had the baseball card of Roy Seavers in the spokes of your bike <laughs> one and two infield looking for a ground ball in a one one game in D.C. and Phelps trying to catch that corner Lance Barksdale having none of it. I tell you what the the Nationals hitters and that could have been called third strike. They have been very patient. But Phelps got squeezed on that one. 
Fox tracks. Shows it was on the corner. 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball. Bouncer. Might be two. Gordon's turn. It is two. Nicely done. 6-4-3. One, one. First of a three gamer in Washington, D.C. Toyota Trend, Marlins and Nationals met 10 days ago and the fish swept them. And since then, the Nationals have righted the ship. They've won five of seven. They're swinging the bats better. And we told you about the nice run that their starting pitchers are on right now. Matt Williams of the Nationals trying to get back to the postseason. They've been there two of the last three years. Max Scherzer going on Wednesday. Just reading an article about, uh, not about Scherzer, but about Jordan Zimmerman. I've read many about Scherzer. But when he threw that no hitter, we all remember, certainly Christian Yelich remembers, the great catch of Steven Sousa Jr. in, in left field. Well, Yelich has said it, and we both watched it. And I think everybody felt it in this ballpark. It was an incredible scene. Last game of the season, Nationals headed to the postseason. It looked like a double, a ball in the gap. Souza had just come in as a defensive replacement. Just came in, and for his reward for making that catch, Jordan Zimmerman, you know, he, he didn't buy him a Rolex watch or something like that. He bought Steven Souza Jr. a gift card at Best Buy. It's <laughs> awesome. Now there's more to that because obviously I think Souza Jr. was moving into a new place and this was to help him and who knows how much the gift card was for. But uh, I'm sure it was a, a nice healthy sum to help Souza into his new place. <laughs> It is definitely the loudest that I've ever heard this building on that catch. Here's Justin Bohr. Marlins fans recognize Justin Bohr as a big, powerful left handed bat who's had a nice start to this year. But around these parts, he's known as a guy that really lit it up at George Mason, which is in Fairfax, Virginia, about 15 miles away. Second on the career home run list for George Mason. He hit 46 homers. Chops one over the middle. That's where Desmond is playing. And he throws him out. That was an inch or two from being a base hit because it almost hit the second base bag. And who knows where it bounces if it hits the bag. 
Yeah, the other part of uh, Justin Bohr's game that we we have grown to really appreciate are his soft hands. For a big guy, he has really soft hands at first base. Now he's made a couple of nice plays. Real Muto lines it. And it's 0 and 1. Around the cage, you have a chance to talk to players about facing a guy like Zimmerman, about their upcoming game, maybe the week that they've had. For JT, I had a chance to ask him, give me the correct pronunciation of your last name because I say real muto. I've heard real muto, and he said real muto. And there you have it. Real muto, he said. Yeah, you know, the other thing, it, it, one of the greatest parts of our job is. To be able to hang around the batting cage and talk to coaches and managers and and hitters. Talking to Frank Manichino. He may beat this. Wow, it's close. That's a strong arm for me and Desmond. Real Muto is out. Jordan Zimmerman on a nice run. He has retired eight straight. Baseball in Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. Visit your South Florida Chevy dealers today. By Checkers. Get Checkers authentic Philly cheesesteak or try the new meatball sub. Pick yours. Area around Nationals Park continues to uh, grow. We've seen new buildings, new restaurants, new. Uh, New stuff going in and around this area of Washington, D.C. Wilson Ramos against David Phelps in a fastball zips up. It's 1 0. Phelps gets Ramos, Desmond, and Espinoza. A lot of construction cranes on the horizon as we peer out and across. The DC landscape. The Capitol building is lit up, but as Tommy pointed out, all the construction scaffolding is uh, is on it. You wouldn't recognize it if you didn't know it was the Capitol. Fastball swing. And it's two and one. Two balls, two strikes. South Florida Honda dealers get you ready for tomorrow. 
Marlins live. Matt Leto, Steven Strasburg. The matchup, Craig, Preston, and Jessica here in D.C. And of course, it's Tuesday. That means emails and tweets, kids. Phelps misses away to Ramos. Counts three and two. We always hope the uh, tweets and emails reach us here at uh, Nationals Park in the booth. Got him. Good sharp breaking ball. And so Phelps gets an out to open up the fourth inning. Here comes Ian Desmond. Well, he was able to expand the zone with two strikes, and he got Ramos to chase a really good slider. Maybe curveball. Either way, a good breaking ball. Ramos didn't have a chance. Ian Desmond's had kind of a, a roller coaster ride as far as offense. He had a couple of hits his last uh, two games in New York, but prior to that, he was 0 for 29. One foul back to the screen. If you're watching this ball game, you see the sign behind home plate, and it's all over the ballpark. 2018 All Star Game is coming here to Nationals Park. Of course, Marlins Park gets the 2017 game. Well, that's going to be fun. So 2017 in Miami, 2018, same division. This year, Cincinnati. Next after that, San Diego. San Diego. So four consecutive National League cities. Desmond, a healthy swing and a miss. Ian Desmond out of Sarasota High School. Always uh, has friends and family in Miami when the Nationals come to town. Two balls, two strikes, 67 pitches in. Is David Phelps. Always remember something I read that Frank Robinson had to say about Ian Desmond. This was quite a few years ago when he first came up. He said I love his instincts. As a player. He looks at a called third strike. On Saturday at Major League Baseball and Fox Sports one returns double header. Division rivalries. Royals and Tigers and then Braves and these Nationals. Coverage begins at 1230 Eastern. On your home for baseball every Saturday. Really good start to this inning by David Phelps. He's made some good pitches. And he's going to have a nice, easy inning. Soft fly ball. Ichiro makes the catch. And a one, two, three, four for David Phelps.
ball game heading to the fifth inning. Now, a couple weeks ago, we told you about a very cool initiative by Major League Baseball. It is called the Franchise Four, and it is where you, the fan, gets to vote for who should be on the Mount Rushmore of your favorite team. There have been millions of votes cast, and we want to give you an update on how the Marlins are doing. Our good friend Jeff Conine continues to lead the way. He is in first place. He's followed by John Carlos Stanton, then Mike Lowell, and Gary Sheffield. Now, remember, you can still cast your vote for your favorite player. Go to MLB.com slash franchise four, but be sure to do it soon. Voting ends this Friday, May 8th. Thank you, Je now, Jessica. Have you have you gone online? Have you filled out uh, your ballot? Have you voted yet? You know, I went online earlier today, and I was tempted to cast my ballot. I was wondering if it would be a conflict of interest because I definitely wanted to go with John Carlos Stanton. You know what? I think I'm going to go for it anyways. And all-star voting is available too. Each row, a little tapper. Zimmerman has it, and throws him out at first base. And tomorrow night, emails and tweets. It was rather entertaining the last time we talked about the franchise four. There was a, a lot of creative uh, suggestions for franchise four for different categories. Now I know you have. I, I know I have. I've, I've done both. I've, I've voted for the franchise four. I've voted uh, for my uh, all-star ballot. Done that a few times. You, you can keep redoing it if you can read those funny little squiggly numbers. And you can do about 25 or 30 of them. Danny Echeverria pokes it foul. Nine straight retired by Jordan Zimmerman. That came after the Ichiro hit back in the second. Miami got a run in the first. A single by Martin Prado, an error on Jason Worth. Marcelo Zuna's RBI single scored Prado. So the Marlins run off Jordan Zimmerman, an unearned run. You know, we've talked about his record. He has really pitched well. At Nationals Park, 77 starts in this ballpark. He's 32 and 19. He just doesn't walk anyone. I mean, that's. I mean, he does walk some, but not many. He hasn't walked anyone in this ball game. He's walked six, and this is his sixth start. And that one is sent into the gap, right center field. Echeverria around first, picked up by Span. And Miami has a base runner, and we'll see if David Phelps can move Echeverria up with a bunt and give D. Gordon a chance at knocking in a run. You know, the no hitter that Jordan Zimmerman threw, it's the first Nationals no hitter. There's the bunt, and it's a good one. Well, I'd love to see a pitcher help himself that way, and that was nicely done by David Phelps. Perfect execution. Only play for Ryan Zimmerman was to tag Phelps. And the thing about the no-no, the, the last no-hitter in Expos slash Nationals franchise history was the perfect game of Dennis Martinez in Los Angeles back in 1991. But he had it all going. He was aggressive. Look at that. Just one walk. And then he got the great defensive play that finished things off. Well, now Gordon, one of the hottest hitters in the National League, and he fouls that one off the catcher, Wilson Ramos. Gordon has lined a center and then popped out. So he's 0 for 2, but he has company. The Marlins have just four hits with two outs here in the fifth. Good speed with Echeverria at second. Outfield not too deep. And that pop up will find the seats. Got pretty good arms in the outfield. Certainly Worth and Harper. Spans is okay, but he's not playing that deep. Yeah, Harper's the arm you gotta be careful of in right field. And Gordon swings and misses at a breaking ball in the dirt. So down goes Gordon. And Jabria left at second, halfway through in D.C. The Nationals, the Marlins. It's 1-1.
executives, coaches at the annual Fish and Chips Double or Nothing Casino Party on Thursday, May 21st at Marlins Park. It's an evening of poker, blackjack, craps, dominoes, live music, hors d'oeuvres, and a silent auction. And reserve your spot. Marlins.com slash fish and chips. David Phelps, Jordan Zimmerman, fastball high. A ball into strike with Denard Span and Yunel Escobar. Coming up, 1 1 ball game. Marlins and Nationals. Opener of a three game set in D.C. Soft line drive. Ichiro on the spot makes the catch. And Jordan Zimmerman has settled in on the mound, and so is David Phelps. Nice to start that inning facing the opposing pitcher and able to get him out early. That's always a good start for a pitcher. David Phelps has settled in as well. Both pitchers. Smoked into center field. Denard Span finally decided not to hit one down toward Martin Prado. He had a pair of hits robbed by Prado. A one out hit. Here comes Yunel Escobar. Well, there's no question the Nationals missed Denard Span those uh, 12 games that he missed at the beginning of the year. He means so much at the top of their lineup. Oh. Escobar takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Look at the numbers career against Phelps. He's one of, the, one of the few hitters that has a little history against Phelps with their time in the American League against each other. Their time together, it sounds so romantic. Their I, time together. I, their time together against each other <laughs> in the American League. <laughs> Tommy talked about Span not running with the uh, injuries that he's had. And Escobar lines it foul, it's 0 and 2. It's a guy that's been a pretty good base stealer in his career. Last year he swiped 31 bags. Phelps does a pretty good job in uh, holding runners at first base. He's fairly quick to the plate and has a, a good move to first. Soft liner into right. Stanton picks it up. Span holds second. And Washington has something going here in the fifth. Runners first and second. Span and Escobar with back to back singles. And Escobar's three for three tonight. Yeah, he's been, uh, he didn't hit that one all that well, but he's been on just about everything tonight. And you were talking earlier about when. Anthony Rendon returns who we saw a lot at third because of the fact that Escobar is hitting because of the fact that he feels probably more comfortable at third. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Rendon over at second base. Now worth was one for two. You got Harper on deck. So this is a real trouble spot in the lineup. Harper has walked twice. And Worth goes after a high fastball and it's a high pop to the shortstop Echeverria. Infield fly is called. It's worth noting that Echeverria is a good 40 50 feet out in the outfield. Well the rule states infield fly if uh, if it can be caught by an infielder. Up and in under the hands Worth just missed it got under it. And a lot of hang time for Echeverria to make the play. There's probably a few Atlanta Brave fans that would uh, 
<laughs> disagree with that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that was uh, what postseason Cardinals three four years ago. Or well, the wild card game. It was before replay. I know that. Phelps working now. On Bryce Harper. A pair of walks and we talked about. Harper leading Major League Baseball with 26 walks. And with his uh, newfound selectivity, his numbers across the board are pretty impressive. His on base percentage over 420, slugging percentage at 489. Pulls a ground ball, Bohr has it and will take it himself. And David Phelps is out of the fifth. Five complete in DC. 1 1. AT&T U-verse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. Edgar Renneria, Craig Council, and the Marlins World Champs in 1997. And guess who's managing now? Craig Council takes over for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's named the 19th manager in Brewers history. Ron Renneke feeling the heat and let go. Got a three-year contract. We wish all the best to Craig Council, one of the best in the game, and really associated with the Milwaukee Brewer organization. He'd been working for them, their front office, the last 10 years, grew up in the area. His father worked in that organization. Yes. Our team Prado lines it right center, and there's Span to make the catch. Prado hits it hard. Out number one here in the sixth inning. John Carlos Stanton, Marcelo Zuna coming up for Miami in the sixth in a tight ball game, obviously, at 1 1. Four hits for Miami, six hits for the Nationals. And Nary an extra base hit in the bunch. Stanton hit a line drive to left that was dropped by Jason Worth. That was back in the first. And he bounced a short. And he drives that one left center field. That ball's deep in the gap. Span closing makes the catch. And then crashes into the wall. Denard Span goes and gets it and robs Giancarlo Stanton of extra bases. I tell you what, anytime Stanton puts a jolt to one here at Nationals Park, you you think it's gonna go out because he's homered 14 times here. Great closing speed by Denard Spann, who got a nice jump, took a perfect route, and was right there for the grab.
two well hit balls to start the sixth. And here is Ozuna. Bouncer to Desmond. And Ozuna is out. That's a very brief sixth inning. One one ball game Marlins and Nationals. And that youngster's got a souvenir. Hopefully he doesn't take the ball out until he gets back home. But he's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he's a yeah. high ball hitter already. Yeah, of course. Dad's in that. See, look how much fun <laughs> he's having. <laughs> Outstanding. Six pitch inning for Jordan Zimmerman. And so David Phelps is right back on the mound. And he gets Ryan Zimmerman, Wilson Ramos, and Ian Desmond. It's really been fun watching these two pitchers get back in their groove after each struggled and had a lot of base runners in the first inning. Ryan Zimmerman knocked in the Nationals run with a sacrifice fly that was back in the first. Both teams came roaring out of the gates and got a run. In the first, and after that, nothing but zeros. I think the presidential helicopter just passed, Rich. Now that was Black Ops, Tommy. I don't think it had running lights on the first in time for an out. Zimmerman's out. And Jessica Blaylock's on. What's up, Jess? Well, look who I tracked down. It's Levon Hernandez night at the ballpark tonight. Levon, of course, pitches both an expo and a national, and he's a name that Marlins fans should know well. He played for the Fish from 1996 to 1999, won a World Series with them in 97, was named MVP in that series. And in addition to the bobbleheads, Rich and Tommy Hernandez threw out the first pitch tonight. And, guys, he looks like he's still got it. Yeah. I, and now the bobblehead. Can we see that again, Jess? Yeah, take a look at that. that now see the picture. Now look at the bobblehead. <laughs> he's 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 lost a little weight in the transfer from box to actual bobblehead. You know what? They they could make one of Levon right now swinging a golf club. <laughs> <laughs> Liner center, and it's caught there. As Marcelo Zuna is there. Levon is one who can appreciate correct counsel, that's for sure. Yes, he can. Now, Ian Desmond, who has struck out twice. A good starting pitching here tonight. No surprise, really. And that one popped up. Prado makes the catch. David Phelps says I'll match you Jordan Zimmerman. That's my six pitch inning. One one.
Nationals starting pitching has been key. Marlins starters with an ERA in the last 11 games right around two. And that form has held here tonight. The only advantage that Zimmerman has is 20 fewer pitches. And as we venture into the seventh, top of both pitchers are coming off six pitch innings. So Zimmerman forced Phelps back out there early, and Phelps answered, and Zimmerman's right back out there. Justin Bohr, JT Real Muto, and Ichiro. Bohr takes a fastball up and in. It's really interesting watching pitchers. Second time around, once they start seeing Justin Bohr, they change things because they know he's aggressive on first pitch fastballs. So they're either going to try to bust him in with it. Or one other time tonight, Zimmerman worked him a first pitch breaking ball. And the one thing that Frank Manichino told Bohr at the start of spring training, and that was you got to learn to go to left and left center. If you're going to have success in the big leagues, we, the Marlins know he can pull it. He's got big power to the pull side. But to become a hitter in the big leagues, he had to drive the ball to left field, and he did it all spring, and it has shown in his short stint up here. Mm, he had a good pitch to hit there. And the count two and two. And that's what, in, in all honesty, has allowed him to be successful as a pinch hitter, which he was not last year. He really struggled in that role, was that ability to just knock it the other way. Well, I think the, the thing that Lenny Harris has gotten into his head about pinch hitting is to use the aggressiveness coming off the bench. Last year, just one for 17. As a pinch hitter. Full count. Let's see if he gets that Zimmerman fastball. It's up and he drives it to left and hits it deep. Worth goes back at the wall and it's gone. Justin Bohr on cue opposite field. <laughs> That's a thing of beauty. Opposite field. He got the fastball. He launched it. Even Jason Worth couldn't make the play. In front of lots of family too here at Nationals Park. Yeah, how cool is that? Bohr who grew up 15 miles from here. He was actually born in Washington, D.C. and then raised in nearby Centerville, Virginia. His first home run this season, and it gives Miami a 2-1 lead. Real Muto swings and misses. Boy, he worked at it bad really well, too. And that'll make his two hitting coaches quite happy. Fastball in, it's one and one. Watch this pitch. It's a fastball up and away. You saw Ramos wanted it in a little bit more. It was out over the plate. The big man extended and launched it. That one's hit to right center. Harper on the move, and he makes the catch at the track. Two good swings by Bohr and Real Muto. Fish Family, the exclusive loyalty program of the Miami Marlins. And now Fish family members can get bonus points during every Marlins road game telecast on Fox Sports Florida. To learn more, log in now. Go to Marlins.com slash Fish family. For all of the Fish family members who tin, tuned in tonight, your bonus code is Fish family. And that's two words. Your bonus code is Fish family. Log on to Marlins.com slash Fish family. Here is Ichiro. And he fillets one foul. Is there a difference if he fillets one or sautés one? Well, fillet is the term that everyone seems to be using with him <laughs> on the Marlins uh, coaching staff. And even manager Mike Redmond uses fillet. Little tapper, Desmond hustling, quick release, and he gets him. That's one of those choppers if it stays down. One more hop, he has a chance to beat it out, but because that second hop came right up to Desmond, he's able to complete the play. Now, Echeverria has struck out, and he singled. Echeverria shoots it into right field, a couple of hits. For Miami's shortstop, he has to be the most productive number eight hitter 
in the game, right? I mean, he's driven in 16 runs. Well, could that be a homework assignment for our crack staff? I'm going to go out on a limb. Well, I'm going to say yes right away. With two outs, David Phelps comes to the plate and he fouls one back. David Phelps dropped down a beauty of a sacrifice bunt in the fifth inning. He would like to pick up his first major league hit all the last few years in the American League just just 13 at bats. And obviously since he's at the plate you would think he's coming out to pitch the bottom of the seventh. It's a 2 1 Miami lead. Down he goes. But the Marlins take the lead. Justin Bohr, opposite field. Local boy makes good. For the Marlins, that is. And it's 2 1. Nationals Park. This is a three-game series, and it starts tonight. Look at the look at the humanity. Tommy Hutton, Craig Minervini, Preston Wilson, Jessica Blaylock, Rich Waltz with you in D.C. Justin Bores solo shot top of this inning has Miami on top two to one. And for David Phelps now, his job get back out there, get some outs, hold the lead, and in all probability. Deliver it to the Marlins bullpen. He's got eight nine one in the Nationals order. Danny Espinoza is up first. A Jordan Zimmerman is on deck, and Phelps misses down low with a breaking ball. I, I always uh, wonder about this move. I mean, it's ninety nine percent or more that he's not going to hit, and I'm curious as to why he's in the on deck circle. Unless maybe Matt Williams is saying if Espinosa gets on, he'll have him bunny him over. I think that would be the only choice. I think that's the reason. Because you don't want to use a position player to bunt in that spot. And Zimmerman's a very good athlete. That one is hammered but foul down the right field line. Espinosa has flied out twice. Espinosa is a guy that. Boy, over the last six games, he has swung the bat really well, and he's kind of mixed and matched with Dan Ugla at second base. We saw both Sam Dyson and Mike Dunn in Miami's bullpen. On the ground, Gordon has it, stays on his feet, and gets the outs. 
Boy, the more and more you watch this Marlins ball club, the more and more you see the importance in how they have won games because of defense. And so without the opportunity to bunt, Clint Robinson will get the pinch hit. The breaking ball misses down low. Robinson making his first opening day roster. He was a, a non roster invitee to spring training. He gives Matt Williams a, a solid left handed bat off the bench. Two for nine is a pinch hitter so far this season. And Phelps with a count three and oh. Two arms are ready in Miami's bullpen. And Phelps is trying to keep those relievers right there. We got Span on deck who has swung the bat well tonight. Hmm. He walked him on four pitches. And here comes Span. Well, the last thing that David Phelps wanted to do was walk the pinch hitter. You've got the left hander in Span coming up. We saw Mike Dunn available. And I also didn't think that Phelps would pitch to Escobar who follows Span because Escobar's three for three off of him. With that in mind, Mike Redmond's going to go to the bullpen. And he's going to get the lefty, Mike Dunn. So for David Phelps, a nice night hanging on to a 2 1 lead. Here's a Wes Kendall call to the bullpen. He walked the pinch hitter Clint Robinson. And Miami goes to their bullpen to get Mike Dunn. The Nationals have also pinch run for Robinson, and they'll do that with Michael Taylor. And so here comes Span to face Dunn. Michael Taylor out of Westminster Academy in Fort Lauderdale. Certainly familiar to South Florida fans and can run. Dunn takes a look at him. Goes over in sort of a. Staggered move.
Taylor and Justin Bohr getting a, acquainted. He's got a leaning move for a leaning lead right now. Ichiro going back has room and makes the catch, and that'll chase the speedy Taylor back to first. Span has hit, hit it hard most of the night. He's got a one for four to show for it. And here is Yunel Escobar, who is three for three. Now here's a situation too, Rich, where you have a a guy like Mike Dunn who who can get lefties and righties, not just a left-handed. Sometimes he struggles with lefties, so you don't have to make the move and go to the bullpen again with Escobar coming up. Because we've seen Mike Dunn when he is throwing at his best, it doesn't matter left-handers or right-handers, he can get them. You wouldn't expect Taylor to take off. We talked about the Nationals. They only have three stolen bases all year. You see Taylor that unique you know, each base stealer. Has his own lead and his own stance so to speak much like a hitter. And Taylor's is a little different. A lot of guys like to place their arms in a spot where they can, or at least they feel like when they start running, things happen quickly. Look at the lean. Not quite weekend at Bernie's, but it's a lean. And he's running. Soft liner into right field. Falls for a hit. Taylor got deeped at second. It kicks away from Stanton. They'll send him to the plate. Stanton's throw. He stops and goes back to third. That would be a run were it not for a deke at second base. Taylor for a brief moment stopped at second. The ball got away from Stanton. And here's a look. Watch the middle infielders. Is it D Gordon? Looks like D Gordon puts a little bit of a decoy on him. That slowed him up. Third base coach Bob Henley was holding him even after Stanton bobbled the ball. Anytime you run in a situation like that, I think you have to try to pick up the ball, even if you're running in a straight steal. You've got to pick up the ball. There's two outs. You got to be going anyway. Mike Dunn on his way out. West Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen. But Taylor did stop at second base and get deep to pit. Dan with two out you you just wonder what the youngster was thinking the ball kicks away from John Carlo but he regroups and throws a bullet to the plate by the way. And so Taylor's still at third Stan made a great recovery and a great throw to the plate. 
Escobar held first. Boy, Escobar four for four tonight. And so Sam Dyson comes in, and his assignment is Jason Worth. Dyson's been outstanding this year. The South Carolina Gamecock with that good control, that great sinker. You go back to April 11th, he's holding opponents to a 171 batting average. Crowd getting riled up here. Miami clinging to a one run lead. Dyson against Worth. Strike one. 98 on the radar gun. You know, that's 97, and it's got funk on it. It's moving, it's diving. A lot of times, guys that throw that hard just throw straight. Dyson is not one of those guys. Not easy to hit. Can't be easy to catch either for a real Muto. At the corners, two outs. 0 oh, 2. Lined in the center field. That's a base hit. That one stayed up. And Worth jumped on it. And this game is tied. You get a major league hitter and you throw three in a row and the third one is up a little bit. Most often they're going to catch up to it. Jason Worth is a really good hitter. He caught up to that one. So for David Phelps, tough to watch. His night is done in terms of his line. Phelps ends up giving two runs on six hits. Yeah, that run charged to, to David Phelps with the one out walk to the pinch hitter. Now Bryce Harper. Lifted in the air. Short stop by Danny Echeverria. Out on the outfield grass. Makes the catch. Inning over. But the Nationals draw even to the eight. It's 2-2. Two -two. A run a piece in the seventh. Here comes the eighth. MLB.com ballpark app. Perfect complement to your visit to Marlins Park. Maps to the ballpark. Menus. You can order food from your seats. Even access and display your game tickets for entry into Marlins Park. Check in with the ballpark app. Receive special offers and gifts. Get the MLB.com ballpark app today. Blake Trinan in for the Nationals. 
Top of the order for Miami. D. Gordon, Martin Prado, Giancarlo Stanton. This game two hours old. And nothing settled. This is kind of an area for the Nationals, Rich, where they've they're still working on piecing things together in their bullpen. For many years, it pieced itself together. Yes, it did. We would we would right now be seeing Tyler Clippard. With Drew Store in the next, and then Rafael Soriano if there was a save situation. But those days are done. Clipper traded to Oakland. Soriano gone as well. Trinan has gone three and zero oh on a speedy man, D. Gordon, who's 0 for three tonight. Gordon squares and takes a strike. Squares again and takes up and walks. Miami has their leadoff man aboard in the eighth. Tomorrow's starters as presented by. Where's the horn? I need the horn. Chevron, Steven Strasburg, Matt Latos. We started at 6:30 with Marlins live. Here's Prado now. Gordon away from first. Trident. On to first. Marlins had a runner picked off earlier. That was Ichiro. Tell you what, the walks have been a problem for Blake Trinan. That's his eighth walk in just 11 and a third innings. So the Nationals took advantage of a walk to the pinch hitter, Clint Robinson. Marlins trying to take advantage of this one here in the eighth inning. Wilson Ramos throws very well from behind the plate. You see Prado's hit it hard tonight. He lined to center his last time up, singled back in the first. Ramos throwing out at a 36% clip, which is above Major League average. Major League average is about 28%. Billy Hamilton on top, but Billy Hamilton hitting in the low 200s. I think D. Gordon came down in an awkward position there. Let's leave it at that. Prado bunting pops it foul. We've seen Prado in this spot. Almost uh, manage himself, and that is a, a veteran player when it's in a, a spot where he's trying to get a player over from second to third, or even in this spot, get uh, Gordon moving. Takes it upon himself to either try to punch it to the right side or even bunt to the right side, and he misses there. It's 0 and 2. We also know, though, in talking to Mike Redman. There, there are times that they discuss, they talk it over as to which option they feel might be the best, which option Mike Redmond wants to see. Well, with two strikes. Gordon at first, and see if he's on the move. Stalemate there. <laughs> Little freeze frame. Eleven stolen bases. He's been caught six times. Not a big lead, not running. And Prado strikes a delayed steal. The throw down. He's safe. Gordon is in. Espinosa lost the ball. It was an awkward tag to begin with because Espinosa just got there when the ball arrived. Remember Emilio Bonifacio used to use this a lot. Yes he did and it's a it's really a unique weapon coming from a guy who's a base stealer. A lot of times the delayed steal you see from a guy who's not a, a burner like a D Gordon. But a heads up move takes great instincts and he pulled it off perfectly. 
because the thought is okay you have a burner at first base you're Wilson Ramos you're the you're the Nationals he doesn't go right away so you assume he's not going to steal he pulls off the delayed steal and gets in scoring position Stanton now and the Nationals are going to walk him to get to Ozuna with Gordon dancing off of second base I tell you what if Trinan had lollipop that uh, pitch to the plate Gordon may have taken off but he threw it with a little with a little something on it. Obviously Stanton is a is a big bat and a guy that has swung it well in this ballpark but having watched Ozuna over the last 10 days Miami very confident in their young center fielder. Especially the way Marcelo Zuna is coming off a, a home stand. Hit 344 on the home stand, had an RBI single, his first at bat tonight. Ozuna, six game hit streak. Matt Williams has got the charts out. Well, he knows the damage Stanton has done in this ballpark, too. So it's Ozuna against Trinan. And a breaking ball for a strike. Good hard slider. Good uh, good first pitch. A tough one for a hitter. Ozuna still looking for his first home run this year. He's got seven doubles. Another good slider. You realize last year, Marcelo Zuna hit his first home run of the season in the first game. He ended up hitting four in the month of April. Went right back out. And Ozuna didn't offer. Two two. Top of the eighth. One out. Starters both gone. And he got him. Good sharp breaking ball. Now what does Matt Williams do with the lefty Justin Bohr coming up. Yeah, he just fed him a steady diet of sliders. All four pitches were sliders, and finally puts away Marcel with a, another good one. They were all good ones. Well, you've got Jeff Baker as a possible righty bat against the lefty if you want to pinch hit for Bohr now, or you have a Michael Morse. So that's what uh, Matt Williams he, he has to say. Okay, do I want? My righty pitching to Bohr, or to want my lefty pitching to one of the uh, other two options. Wes Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen.
Justin Bohr, who homered to give the Marlins a 2-1 lead, grew up about 15 miles from here in Virginia. Jeff Baker, also a Virginia guy, just across the uh, border, so to speak. And he will pinch hit against Matt Grace. The lefty comes out of Washington's bullpen. Part of that uh, bullpen, they have three left-handers in their bullpen. Grace with a pretty good sinking fastball and slider. A lot of ground balls from Grace. Last year in the minor leagues. And here is Baker, and of course, Baker getting a start on Saturday. Coming through with a double in a key spot. He swings and misses at a breaking ball. Yeah, you like to unwind and get loose sometimes on that first pitch. D. Gordon at second, Giancarlo Stan at first. And Grace misses away. Ball on a strike. Baker, a guy that hasn't had a whole lot of at bats. That's the importance of getting four of those at bats on Saturday night. It was against Cole Hamels. Baker, line drive, base hit, right field. Here comes Gordon. Harper's throw. Safe at the plate. Gordon with a head first slide. And Jeff Baker comes through. And for all that doubt the importance of getting a bench player. Oh, I start. know where you're going with this. I love the Preston semi rant on Marlins Live tonight. <laughs> Talking about why do you give guys a day off? Why do you play this guy? That's exactly why. You give him some ABs so he can come through with a clutch base hit. If he sits around for a week and a half, he doesn't have that kind of swing. It's four ABs on Saturday and a huge pinch hit RBI single to give Miami a 3 2 lead. Baker ends up at second, Stanton's at third. And Real Muto intentionally walked D. Gordon huffing and puffing. Boy, anytime the ball ends up with Harper, you always hold your breath. He's made some incredible throws in his short time in the big leagues. And he uncorked a strong throw to the plate. Gordon obviously racing hard with two outs. Was able to get there with a head first slide and get around Wilson Ramos. And by the way the Marlins do capitalize on that leadoff walk. The walk to D Gordon. He comes in for the go ahead run. And how about that. The Marlins come to D.C. and the two biggest hits of the night so far belong to Virginia players. Guys, area guys. Guys that grew up in this area. Jeff Baker and Justin Bohr. Now Ichiro with the bags loaded against the lefty Matt Grace. And a breaking ball is outside. It's one and zero. Oh. Ichiro is hit in five straight, including tonight. It's in. And it's 2 0. Tell you what, the 41 uh, year old is going to make this young left hander work. Look at that. Four grand slams for Ichiro in his career. Man, 382. It's a strike. And it's 2 and 1. A run across, bags loaded, two outs, two one to Ichiro. Up the middle, Espinoza backhands, can't hold it, run scores, and it's four two Miami. Danny Espinoza to his right, got a glove on it. You could tell he was speeding up because he had no shot at Ichiro at first. His only play was going to be real Muto at second. Well, we talk about the defense. We've seen it work for the positive for the Marlins, and here on the negative side for the Nationals. 
Marlins pick up a run speed. The ball is bobbled but it's a base hit all the way for Ichiro. And it's 4 2. Remember as well that that slide at second by Gordon it dislodged the ball out of the glove of Espinosa. Don't underestimate the speed of Real Muto going from first to second as well. Echeverria now against the lefty in the dirt and it's blocked by Ramos. So it's 1 and 0. Oh. Michael Morse on deck. Good ball game tonight. Ball and a strike. Echeverria, a couple of hits. Brian Morris in Miami's pen. Baker, Real Muto. Ichiro. That's a very the eighth man to hit in the inning. And he flips it foul. It counts two and two. Two two. An off speed pitch. This will give Ichiro a head start from first. Real Muto a running start from second. Baker will just try not to get beaten by a, a line drive from third. He'll take his time coming down the lane. Yeah, stay out of the way as a runner at third. Strike three called. Fastball. Echeverria parks, but he is out on strikes. But the Marlins, D. Gordon, flying home, and it's 4 2. Four two Marlins on top Jeff Baker an enormous pinch hit RBI single and I would expect that riled things up down in the dugout Jessica 
That's right, Rich. A huge reaction for Jeff Baker when he came into the dugout from his teammates. He got a high five from every single one of them. After that, Lenny Harris came up to him and said, that's what you do. That's what you do. A huge RBI single. And I talked to him before the start of the game, asked him about those at-bats that he got over the weekend, and he said they were certainly a huge help. And we saw him come through with that huge RBI single. And Gordon scoring a Rand Eye Institute highlight there. Fake getting a little gum. Got his dad, the Colonel, I think, in the stands tonight. But isn't that something that two guys who probably didn't sleep in, in, their, in the hotel, they probably went home and got to sleep in the, their own home beds and where they grew up. There is Zimmerman now. Zimmerman, another Virginia guy, University of. Wilson Ramos and Desmond. Brian Morris out of the bullpen. Bottom eight. First pitch in there for a strike. Now four runs, eight hits for Miami. Two runs, eight hits for Washington. What a couple of nice pitches from Brian Morris to start a really tough hitter in Ryan Zimmerman. David Phelps started six and a third for Phelps. He's charged with the two runs. Mike Dunn and Sam Dyson came in and finished the seventh. Boy, another uh, solid start. Not only for a Marlins starter, but from David Phelps, too. Marlins Live brought to you by Checkers right after the game. Sammy Solis in Washington's bullpen. Zimmerman did not offer. And they count full three and two. With that extra run, it allows. Whoever's pitching to really challenge hitters with nobody on base. Yeah, we've seen tonight what the walk can do, what can happen. And it's up, and a leadoff walk to Ryan Zimmerman. The tough part about that leadoff walk, if you remember. Brian Morris got ahead 0-2 to Zimmerman and then lost him. Wilson Ramos now. Ramos one for three. And Morris splits the plate and gets a strike on the Nationals catcher. Yet Ian Desmond on deck. The ball on a strike. Morris with a nice ERA in the low twos. 13th appearance. Ties him with A.J. Ramos for the team lead. Popped him up. Good pitch. Baker. Makes the catch. And so Brian Morris has an out here in the eighth inning.
Now Desmond. Desmond cracks it to center, hits it deep. Ozuna goes back, and it's gone. And the Nationals tie it up. Every time the Marlins have had a lead in this ballgame, the Nationals have come back to tie it. Well, we told you Ian Desmond broke out of an 0 for 29 in New York, takes care of a hanging slider, and that leadoff walk bites you because just like that, it's a tie game. It's one thing to give up the home run. A solo shot doesn't tie the game. The leadoff walk and the home run, all of a sudden a 4-4 tie. Here is Espinoza. He cracks one foul. Baker sprawled across the line. Back to back innings now. The leadoff walk has come in to score for the Nationals. Still only one out. Tanner Roark is up quickly getting ready for the Nationals. And Espinoza swings and misses. So two outs but a two run homer in a 4 4 game. Tyler Moore is going to come up and pinch hit for the Nationals. Moore takes a strike. Moore, a guy. Who has shown big power in the minor leagues. Last year in 42 games. Had four home runs. Mississippi State product. Brandon Mississippi is home. And Morris. Misses low. Yeah a few years ago. Tyler Moore you talk about his. Home runs in the minor leagues led the Eastern League. In home runs and doubles and RBIs. Two and one. Denard spans on deck. Hit hard into center for a hit. A two out single. Now a couple of balls hit very hard. The one by Moore, certainly the one by Desmond. For Tyler Moore, his third pinch hit this year. Span has hit it hard all night. He's one for four. Martin Prado robbed him of a pair of hits, first and the second. He singled in the fifth. He lined the left his last time up. Strike one. Span doesn't like it. 
And that's Barksdale adamant about the call. Here's a look. And it's a strike. That's where it crosses the See, front the of the hitter, plate. The hitter sees and looks back and sees where the catcher catches it. And loses sight of the fact that when it crossed the plate, it was actually a strike. Here's the 0 1. Hold foul. Washington's leadoff man up. Nationals have tied it here in the eighth. By Baker and down the line. Stanton over for it, picks it up. Span on his way to second. He'll get there. Moore arrives at third. And the Nationals are still kicking here. And not done yet. And you've got a hot hitter coming up. You know, Escobar, who's four for four. Was some flat sliders back up and to a hot hitter. You mentioned the fact that Spans hit the ball hard every time tonight. Moore races over to third. And it also gets a visit from Chuck Hernandez. Well, Hernandez is out. Marlins bullpen is quiet right now. You got Morris here who had the leadoff walk. He got Ramos to pop out, then gave up the two run homer to Desmond. Struck out Espinosa. Taylor singled. Span has doubled. And here's Escobar. Escobar takes up and it's one and zero. Oh. and Chuck Hernandez calling down in the pen no one throwing right now worth is on deck and Escobar pulls it foul remember in the game yesterday Brian Morris pitch yesterday so did A.J. Ramos. There was a little something. Remember there was a pause. He got a visit from the training staff. There was a little tweak. Nothing serious. And I, and I think A.J. is all right tonight. But he's not warming up right now. Nick Massett starts to loosen up. 1-1 one, one coming to Escobar. He lines it down the right field line. And the Nationals are going to get two more. Escobar has a five for five night. And so Morris who's been knocked around. Nobody ready in the pen and he ends up having to face Escobar. Who smokes it to right. Before the inning started there were two choices for Mike Redman one was to leave Dyson in but remember Dyson gave up uh, a base hit that uh, ended up tying the game gave up that base hit it was hit sharply by Jason Worth. So the choice was to go to Brian Morris who was hoping to be effective for Mike Redman that didn't happen and then you wonder what the state of the bullpen is right now with a couple of arms down there. Morris gets a strike to Jason Worth. And for a game that has been so well played by both clubs, but by the Marlins, certainly, you, you would hate to lose this game in this fashion.
And Worth pulls one foul. One two. And it's in. Boy, and all of a sudden, a lot of pitches in this inning for Brian Morris. This is the eighth man that he's faced. Roller out to second. Gordon gathers and gets the out. But the Nationals hang four big runs up in the bottom of the eighth and lead it going to the ninth by two. Kubota. For more information or to find participating dealers, go to FloridaCubotaDealers.com. Well, this was a 1 1 game for the longest time, but you can see the last two innings, a lot of runs. Eight total have been scored. Ian Desmond with a big shot, a two run homer to tie it. And then you now Escobar. Extending his night to five for five. A two run single to right. Well, and because he's been busy the last few games, Drew Storen getting the night off. So last year, here you're looking at a 15 game winner, Tanner Roark, but with the moves that the Nationals made, he's been put into their bullpen. And Roark has never had a major league save. Reed Brignac will pinch hit to open the ninth for Miami. With D. Gordon, Martin Prado, and if anybody reaches, Giancarlo Stanton. Right now, that's the goal. You're the Marlins. You want to at least get Big G to the plate. Breaking ball, and Brignac goes after it, fouls it at the plate. Ball up and in, and it's two and two. And he goes after that same breaking ball. He thought he tipped it. Home plate umpire Lance Barksdale says no tip. Brignac shaking his head. 
and headed towards the dugout and Roark gets a strikeout to open the inning. Here's a look. Big curveball. High def highlight. He did not tip it. He missed it. H.H. Gregg bringing you the high def highlight. Now D. Gordon. And Roark with a count 0 and 1 out in front. At the letters for a strike, 0 and 2. It's a comfortable feeling. If you're Matt Williams, boy, that was a high strike. And you can have a 15 game winner from last year in the close again. Gordon up the middle into center field. He's got a base hit. And the Marlins have some life here with one out in the ninth. Boy, that pitch and breaking ball, especially after that high fastball, was right around his shoe tops. And he sneaks it into center. Yeah, watch where this curveball is. Shoe tops and off the plate. And he gets it right back up the middle. Good job by D. Gordon. <laughs> Look where it was on Fox <laughs> tracks. Here's Prado now. He's one for four. Stanton is on deck. Marlins down two in the ninth. And Roark pours across the fastball for a strike. And when Max Scherzer joined the band, Roark joined the bullpen. Oh, and two. Stan has homered against Roark. It's two for 11. Oh, and two, one out. Gordon. Not a big lead at first. And Prado fights off a fastball in tight. Oh, and two again. One two. Prado a high pop up. Desmond is out. Outfield grass. And so it's down to Stanton now. D Gordon at first and two outs. Well you get what you wanted at least. You get the big guy to the plate representing the time run. There you see his numbers. We've talked about him tonight. Giancarlo Stanton's numbers here at Nationalist Park. 14 home runs overall, 23 home runs against the Nats. But 14 here. Outfield very deep. Roark misses up and in. Stands in 0 for 3 tonight. Walked intentionally and scored in the 8th. Look how deep that outfield is. And Roark misses away. And so far he hasn't gotten anything close. And Stanton gets a fastball here. Ramos set up out. And it was. Way off the plate. Counts three and zero. Oh. Look at that. Nothing close. Oh. 
Fastball right down the middle. Now it's three and one. A couple of times we've seen Stanton with the green light, three and zero, oh, and he's yet to look real comfortable at pitch selection on three and zero. Oh. Three and one. Slider and he chased. Miami down to the last strike down two two outs ninth inning. D Gordon's at first three two to Stanton. Struck him out slider. And the Nationals win game one in come from behind fashion not once not twice but three times in the ball game. And how about this they they get a win from Grace his first major league win. So Matt Grace gets his first win. Tanner Roark gets his first major league save. You know Escobar goes five for five, including the game winning RBIs. Ian Desmond ties it in the eighth with a two run homer. And the Marlins, who got two late runs to take a 4 2 lead, drop this one 6 4. Marlins Live is coming up live from Nationals Park. Greg Minervini, Preston Wilson, and Jessica Boylock.